Hello, welcome to Fisher Pro's life story number three. Three, do it properly. Um, broadcasting live from Perrinpool today down in Cornwall. Uh, maybe a little bit of a connection issue, so apologies for I'm late, especially to my mum, who's just texted me to say she's in bed, snuggled up, waiting for a story, and I'm quarter of an hour late. So hopefully this works. Um, and I promised Bertie not to talk too much this time, so I'm going to start straight away. Uh, but before we do, uh, obligatory. Uh, and it's proper Merlot this time. So, today's story is setting for two. Ben Marie stood inside the entrance of Poisson Rouge, waiting to be seated. Friday, thought Ben. He looked at the photos on the wall to see if there was one he'd missed before. Then he looked at his wife's bottom and cupped it with his hand. He thought back to the days when he wouldn't feel the line of anything underneath. Later, Marie said, shooing away his hand and trying to get the attention of the maitre d'. Always later. Good evening, said the maitre d'. Table for two? The maitre d' took them to a table near the bay window and provided them with menus. A few minutes later, their waiter arrived. Good evening, Madame Monsieur. Good evening, Laurent, said Marie. Ben smiled, nodded. Do I need to inquire what you might be having this evening? Oh, said Marie, sighing at her own charade. She closed the menu and handed it over. Ben feigned a smile and gave his menu up to Laurent's outstretched hand. I'll be right back with your drinks. Marie edged her chair forward an inch and adjusted her fork a quarter of an inch to the right. Then she looked up and prepared to be teased. But Ben was too busy looking after Laurent, persuading himself that he hadn't really wanted any of the specials. Marie tugged upwards on the strap of her top and looked at her husband. Ben turned and looked out of the window. The sun was setting on the Hibiscus Bay. The tide drew in and the searching fingers of the sea massaged the beach beneath it. The restaurant's double-glazed windows blocked the sound of the waves so that all that Ben could hear was Michael Bublé intermingled with the familiar hubbub from the familiar clientele. He thought this was a shame. The Californian Sauvignon Blanc for Madame and the house red for Monsieur. Ben stayed, staring out of the window. Thank you, mouthed Marie. Laurent glanced at the back of Ben's head, smiled at Marie and headed back to the kitchen. Ben, dear, you don't have to have the house, you know. Ben, t ben turned back to face Marie and took a large sip of wine. I like the house. You should be celebrating the Richmond deal. We are celebrating. You can have anything you want. I like Merlot. She reached across the table and touched his hand. He didn't react for a second, then turned his hand up to cut hers. So, said Marie, looking forward to golf tomorrow? Yeah, said Ben, should be good. He wasn't. Golf was a way to relate to the men he knew. He would talk about Richmond, he thought. They would want to hear about that. Ben looked back out of the window. The clouds were turning pink and reflecting in the deep sea. Look at that, Marie. Isn't that beautiful? What's that? She said, peering out of the window. The sky. It's nice, said Marie. Here comes our starters. Laurent glided up to the table and placed the food in front of Ben and Marie. Enjoy. Thank you. Ben took in two, three more seconds of the sunset before turning to his soup. Both Marie and the soup looked the way he remembered them. It was a minute and two triangles of melon later when Marie let out a small gasp. Her eyes widened. What? Look at that. She nodded towards the window. Ben turned to look out. The clouds had shifted, making the sunset even more dramatic. He turned back to smile at Marie. But upon seeing her eyes, he realised she wasn't looking at the sky. Do you see him? He looked out the window again and saw the man in the waves below. He looks drunk, she said. Ben observed the fully clothed man carefully. He floundered and fell into the sea before picking himself up lazily and letting another wave take his feet from under him. He did look drunk. The man then proceeded to pull his shoes and socks off between waves, letting the water take them. He then tore at his tie, tossing it to one side, and then undid his shirt before the next wave tugged him under. 
He resurfaced, bare-chested. Oh my, said Marie, the full Monty. The man tottered as the current undercurrent sucked the water away from the shore in his feet. Another wave hit him. I'm not sure this is doing anything for my appetite, said Marie. Hmm, said Ben. Ben watched as the man swayed, and then, seemingly losing his footing, half fell, half jumped into another wave. He's probably come down from Pirate Sam's, said Marie. I wonder if anyone's made a call. Hmm. Ben, said Marie. Are you listening? Ben calmly sunk his mallow, got up from the table and walked off. She glanced after him, guessing he needed the bathroom. Then she took a sip of his wine, popped another piece of melon into her mouth and sat mesmerised by the now fully naked, middle-aged drunk tumbling in the water. She didn't see the beautiful sunset, but she did see another man ambling across the beachfront towards him. At first she thought it might have been a policeman, but then she recognised the man as her husband. Good man, she thought, as she smiled delicately around a new piece of melon. It's not exactly a view becoming of Poisson Rouge. However, Ben didn't appear to be talking to the man, and said so he had come to a stop about ten feet to the man's right, and had started taking his shoes and socks off. He yanked his tie off and then relieved himself of the expensive jacket he'd, she'd bought for him last Christmas. The jacket and tie landed in the sand, soon followed by his trousers, and before long her husband stood and stark naked, looking out across the sea towards the setting sun. Marie swallowed the piece of lem- melon prematurely and it struggled down her throat. She sat with her mouth open, staring at the bare back, legs and bottom of her husband, body parts that looked very foreign outside of the warm private light of their bedroom. Her face turned as pink as the sky and she furtively looked from table to table to see if anyone else had spotted the two naked men on the beach. They had. Knowing smiles were shared between the tables. Marie shut her mouth and played long, hoping no one would notice the empty chair opposite her. Down on the beach, Ben made his way to the sea. The water was cold between his toes. He took two stepped steps forward before rushing out as far as he could to meet the next wave. With each step, the resistance of the water grew stronger, around his knees, his naked thighs, and then his waist. The first wave hit, and Ben tensed as the salty water crashed against his warm body. He stood his ground and spat out the seawater. Then he looked over at the man, who nodded at Ben just before another wave hit him. The man let the wave take him, and then came out of the water smiling. Ben smiled, realising the man had not been drinking. Ben turned to face the sunset. A large wave rose up before him, a large wall of green and white that blocked the sky. He relaxed his thighs and shoulders and let the water take him. The end. Thanks for tuning in, guys.